So this is a new feature we're just inventing. Uh, person of the month, the basic idea is to like highlight personalities of the Python community, international or local, uh, so that when you uh, start being a member of this community, you can you see names thrown around, and this guy is the author of this, and this person is this organizer. And with these five minutes uh, highlights, I'd like to uh, like introduce uh, names of the community to you so that you can relate and know where they are, who they are, and maybe in conferences you can connect with them because you know something. So any feedback is very welcome after, because it's the first time we're doing this. So if you want to do it, you can. If you have any feedback, uh, it will be welcome. <coughs> All right. For this first segment, uh, I chose Guido Van Rossum. So Guido is the inventor of the Python language. Um, I have a few uh, uh, dates. So in 1989, he started Python. And uh, 14 months later, there was the first release. So it was December and then uh, February. Uh, so you can see our favorite language has uh, 20 years. Um, you can see along the history of Python, uh, uh, things from the community which have uh, like Guido's uh, um, participation, like uh, with the creation of a mailing list, actually a Newsnet uh, discussion group, uh, the process became more open and like more focused around the community, not just one person. Uh, the same thing with the PEP process. It's a balance between like heavy standardization and just uh, anarchical uh, discussion in mailing lists. With you, you get anarchy and chaos, and you you don't make progress. So with the PEPs, that's how the community defines a big change we want to do, and people can have objections and counter proposals, and like big syntax changes or big uh, module additions are discussed with PEPs. I don't know is everybody familiar with PEPs. And this process was invented by Python, and it's been taken in a lot of other communities. So it's a, a very good legacy from Guido Van Rossum and other people uh, for free software in general. This is also the year of Python 2.0, uh, which is mostly a big uh, license change from the previous generation. It's not like Python 3. Uh, a good date, Python Software Foundation was founded uh, in uh, 2001. So it's like a non-profit organization which holds the moral rights. Uh, so you see Guido is uh, still uh, leading the language evolution, but not coding as much. And in these big steps, you can see how he's, uh, he's making so that the community does not depend on him only, which I think is a really good attitude. Uh, in 2005, he was hired by Google, and he left uh, in the end of uh, last December, so seven years. Uh, you may know this uh, logo, Google App Engine here, which is uh, Google's platform so that you can run your applications uh, on a hosted platform without renting your own server. It's a modified Django. Uh, now it's working for Dropbox, that was the other logo. Uh, a big contribution from Guido is also Readvel, which is a code review tool. You can use it for free at uh, codereview.appspot.com. <coughs> and uh, of course, that was the year of the Python 3 release. And another big change, like more recent, uh, using Mercurial as version control system instead of subversion. Uh, some reasons were like ease of use for the developers, but mostly the change was done to ease contributions by other people because it's uh, much more easy to maintain your fork and your patches with a DVCS than with subversion. And it took a year to be implemented. Uh, a few interesting links. Uh, that's Guido's uh, car plate. It's in Virginia, it's Python. Uh, that's his website, the uh, homepage on the python.org site. Uh, this is his current web blog when he talks about Python or tech or many things. And this is a really interesting, uh, very interesting blog about the history of Python. You can learn uh, why he used indentation to delimit blocks or meta classes. How did they come to invent that? It's really interesting to understand more about how things were implementing. And the big surprise is that like the first version of classes is just like how we know them today. It's, uh, it's really fun to understand the history. This one is an article about the history of Python, which you don't find from the docs.python.org or his webpage. So I put the link. It's an interesting one. And I'd like to leave with a quote from Quido. The joy of coding Python should be in seeing short, concise, readable classes that express a lot of action in a small amount of clear code, not in reams of trivial code that bores the reader to death. Thank you. Thank you.